Welcome back guys to another episode of Decentralized Chain. It's Faraz bringing you the latest news, reviews and a blockchain tech. If it's your first time here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below so you can stay up to date with all the upcoming news and reviews as well as interviews with promising projects. Now today we are going to be talking to Mike Chen. He is the CEO and founder of STP Network. And so STP Network is looking to bring a decentralized way of tokenizing any asset onto the blockchain. Now, one thing to note is STP Network is powered by Block72, and what that actually means is that the team behind Block72, which also includes Mike Chen, but more importantly, they've been associated with well-known performing projects such as Zilliqa, such as Bitmax, Ontology, Hedera Hashgraph, the list does go on, and really they're taking all of their knowledge and know-how and ultimately consulting background to launch STP Network. So let's jump straight in and see how successful we think that STP could potentially be. So welcome to the show, Mike. Great to have you here. Um, appreciate you taking the time, first of all, to really walk us through what STP Network is. And I suppose for those tuning in, I mean, let's just jump straight into it. What What is what is STP Network? Um, yeah, thank you for having me here. So I'm Mike, the CEO of STP, a standard organization protocol. I'm also CEO of Block72, a global digital uh, investment banking okay. that helps mostly like a financial service, provide financial service for like uh, digital assets. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for uh, for STP standard tokenization protocol, it's a decentralized asset network. So I think we will focus on the life cycle of the token insurance process. So I think there's in the current industry, there's so many in transparency, you know. Mm -hmm. during the life cycle of the, when you issue tokens. For example, uh, right now IEO is hard, right? Lots of assets got issued through IEO platform, but no one knows, for example, Binance pick lottery, no one knows how, what's the process of this, how they pick a lottery, how they pick a lucky guys mm -hmm. who can place these uh, IEOs, right? And uh, and also maybe the error, no one knows the steal wrong price, no one knows, you know, the how, what's a big what's the discount they got for the big investors? So I think there's so many in transparency in in the in the in the asset insurance in the digital space, uh, digital asset space. So we want to make a decentralized versions uh, of the uh, insurance network. So make every, make this process more fair to everyone. Okay, and I suppose that's your fundamental reason behind having it on the blockchain as opposed to. A centralized service today so everyone has that transparency in terms of what's going in and what's going out basically yeah yeah i think that, that that's mostly i think one logic I, that was why we want to do a lot of stps that mm -hmm. that thing but we also have other re reasoning so i think another big reason i want to do stps is i think so plus and two at the digital events and bankings we have been in you know the issuance helping most issuer in this space for a while maybe two years so lots of like top of projects in the world are, are like investment banking so, uh, clients for example like hashgraph ogron mm -hmm. uh basically 10 tokens mana argo so on we, mm -hmm. we we have been tracking more than 40 projects last year so uh, i think for digital investment banking we have a formula right mm -hmm. one is assets so we have a strong we really have strong pipeline of all assets right but another thing on the on, on, on the other hand of the formula is i think uh, is money or capital mm -hmm. so I think for the past years we we have we have a strong network of all institutions and accrediting investor networks uh, so we have we have lots of capital from them but i think right now i think in this world i think especially in 2019 right now ieo is a very very buzzword right now so i think uh, I think that one thing that IEO like uh, forced us to upgrade our service is, you know, IEO is also a fundraising mechanism, just mechanism, just like what do we do for mm -hmm. investment. But IEO is say matching the traffic or the retail investors with the assets. But for before for Blossom Two, so we were matching institutions and, and private investors with assets. So I think that's a major difference because I think crypto digital asset markets is 95% retail investors. Mm -hmm. So matching big traffic like use, exchange users or retail investors with assets during the fundraising process, sometimes maybe it's, it will be better than just matching institutions, big VCs, right? Engaging 1,000 people to participants your network launch mm -hmm. is better better than or more powerful than just engaging two VCs in, 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 in your fundraising round, right? So I think that's what another reason we want to do. I think this STP, we want to use token to engage 
and active our communities. Mm -hmm. So, so I think when we do fundraising or we provide fundraising service for other projects, we're no longer only providing institution money or capitals, but we are also providing community, but we are also uh, gave them, you know, uh, engagements and the capital from the communities and also the traffic. So I think that's on the, so we will take, I think Blossom 2 in 2019, we will take more uh, community driven, like uh, investment thesis. So in this approach, I think STP will power Blossom 2 to, to engage our community very naturally by integrating the token economy, by integrating the token utility in our business use case mm -hmm. at day one. Okay. So that's, that's yeah no no that's that's quite impressive actually because I suppose if you think about it you're right there are certain deals and sales that happen that you know are open to institutional investors that aren't necessarily open to you know your average retail or your your average investor so I suppose in a way this gives them the opportunity to own a fraction of that or be able to participate in some of that yeah. as well without having to go. I through. think I think to add your points I think that because I think uh, just like a traditional like a stock market in the states mm -hmm. right a hundred years ago when Wall Street just Begin. 95, 99% are retired when the retirement investors, when the market gets mature, mature, so there's more and more institutions coming into play. Mm -hmm. But in crypto digital assets, I don't think institution is coming yet. So okay. I think that in most markets, especially Asian market, it's all about retirement investors. So, but I think, I think the 2018, why the, 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 the price just got mm -hmm. wrecked, right? I think is, a major reason is that too much institutions, you know, they have they, they got very discounted, like uh, maybe seed around, mm -hmm. and then they got maybe, uh, they got also like some big wheels can get very much cheap price. So most communities don't have access like those yes. guys, okay, right? So people say, oh, the community always bought bought the token after you know maybe two x three x. Yeah, once uh, everyone's dumped on them, basically, right. in a way. So, so yeah, so so I think so definitely. So we want to make the whole token insurance process fair to everyone. Mm -hmm. So through STP network, through Blossom Two network, I want to give the community the same access to those deals that most VC can get. Okay. And uh, and another reason I think uh, I think why the another reason why price got wrecked I think is you know fundraising in the bush market before like for example Blossom Two when we help one quarter fundraising right it's easy to to just bring like maybe 20 funds each mm -hmm. each fund invest twenty dollars right so but it's not good for i think this token dis distribution model is not good because eventually if if all the if you if one project wants to raise 20 million dollars and only 20 fund participants right mm -hmm. there are only 20 like, token holders right big wallet holders right but i think why ieo is so popular because i think it's not it's more than like fundraising method but it's also is a very very good token distribution model so for average projects, when you do IEO, maybe for Binance, at day one, you will have a 2,000 token holders. Each one buys through IEO platforms. Yeah. So I think in the decentralized world, the more token holders you have, I think the, the better chance you will succeed. Okay. So that's... So that's interesting. And you've, you've mentioned a number of other different platforms and, and projects. And so I know within the community, there are people sort of said, how are you guys different from your competitors? So when I think about competitors, maybe Polymath is one that comes to mind. Yep. What, 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 is, what is your unique selling point? What is your competitive advantage over those who are kind of not doing something similar, but in that space with you guys at the moment? I think it's very, I think it's very, it's a very good question. Mm -hmm. So I think on, on, on protocol level, so I think so there's different definitions for competitors this world. So I think on protocol levels, we have competitors like Polymath, mm -hmm. Harbor, this is. But I think in business level, I think those will not be our similar competitors. I think uh, there's a few reasons. I think Polymath, Harbor, those are more like tech-driven, technology-driven mm -hmm. protocols. So I think they spend most energies in developing the protocols, making making the tech, uh, tech technology better. Uh, I think we define STP as a business driven protocols. So I think business comes first to us in this user case. So I think that's the first thing, the first difference. And the second difference is we are not only focused on STOs. I think Polymath, Harbor, they mostly mm -hmm. I think ninety five percent focusing on STO. So STP focusing on all form, forms of tokenized tokenizations or issuance, mm -hmm. IEOs, IPOs, STOs, tokenized ads, credits. Uh, I think that's that I think we have we have more broad broad focus uh -huh. uh, compared to those guys. So I think in terms of the advantage, I would say uh, we so I think a business first is I think one big advantage we have. Just I think 
come back to Binance. I will use Binance as yeah. another example mm -hmm. because it's just it's one of the best, right? So I think, you know, there's so many, so Binance just launched Binance blockchain, right? Yeah. So, so I think Binance approach is what we want to take. Binance have business first as an exchange. They have lots of user traffic mm -hmm. from exchange uh, users. Then when they have everything, when they are so successful in the user acquisitions and also the business revenues, then mm -hmm. they make more chance. So uh, compared to other like technical driven, like a uh, public blockchains, right? Mm -hmm. So there may be, uh, there's maybe 20, 30 public blockchains in the world, but no one uses them. Yeah. So, I, so I think Binance support is very good. They have users, they have business first. Mm -hmm. So then they launch the protocol. So so one Binance, Binance chain launched at, at day one. They will migrate all the Binance like centralized exchange users and the business into the Binance chain. So I think I think this approach will enable Binance to have lots of users in their public blockchains, right? So I think the ultimate goal of blockchain is at least you have, you need someone to use it, right? Mm -hmm. If even though maybe some I think some blockchain technical technology is very great, but just no one use they 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 transact maybe five times a day. It's not yeah. It's <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, right? So I think for for STP and Blossom too, so we will take a same approach. I think mm -hmm. business success success will lead technology adoption. Okay. So I think this logic because I think for Blossom too, so we have been one of the best uh, digital events in banking for almost uh, like uh, the past uh, year and a half. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of revenues. We have lots of pipeline. We have a great pipeline of clients. So we are on board those our business user case and our like pipeline of mm -hmm. network and also investors to STP at day one. So I think uh, that's that's very that's a uh, very like uh, one of the advantage. I said I think second advantage is we are global teams. So I think uh, digital assets, I think the com compliance requirements in different you know, continents are mm -hmm. different. So I think Polymath, Harbor, they're most like Western, maybe US based okay. or Canadian, right? So definitely they face more, uh, more I think more strict regulatory, reg regulatory compliance requirements. Yes. So that's why they only focus STOs. I think in the, so and right now for SDP and Blossom 2, so we have three of this. So when, Shanghai, one in Korea, and one in the New York. So I, I was, I, 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 I'm separating like U.S. office and also Asian office. So for U.S. office, we are do the same thing, like Polymath and Harbor. We are mm -hmm. do the most compliant way. We will acquire, we we are acquiring broker dealer license, uh -huh. and we will order like a regulatory license to become a fully compliant broker okay. in the states. Mm -hmm. And we will do, I think. Um, we will also launch a coin, uh, like a token service, like a platform, like Coinlist or Angelist, institutional okay. VC. Mm -hmm. so, uh, we will we we will only do like sales uh, or token uh, or assets insurance towards you know institutions and uh, credit investors. Yeah. So that's what we 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 will do in the states. So I think in the states, I think Polymath and Harbor will be more competitive to us. Uh, Compared to us, okay. but in Asia, I think in Asia we have big team. We have more than like sixty percent of our employees are in Asia, China, and Korea. Mm -hmm. So in China, I think definitely it will be a blue sky for us. I think it also will give us a strong advantage uh, compared to those Western competitors. You know, in, because in Asia the regulation is looser, and uh, we can take more aggressive approach in yes. user uh, in user acquisitions, in deal flows. Everything. So I think being global, it also gave us flexibility to do lots of things that other people cannot do. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. I mean, you've got a really global team. I mean, I, mean, I was going to ask about your team and partners, but you've kind of gone on to them. And it's, it's pretty impressive, actually, because uh, I suppose we've, I, I, we've spoken less about the technicalities of your platform. And, you know, there's a white paper available. People can go to your website and understand how your validator committee works, for example. Um, mm -hmm. but, it's, uh, but what I do like is obviously clearly... You know, you're more focused at it from a business perspective and how you can execute from a business function. And and I really like that. So, I mean, let's talk a little bit more about um, Block 72, because, um, okay. you know, I, I think there's a bit of confusion. I wouldn't say confusion, but people do obviously mention, right, hold on. So your STP network, you were running STP mm -hmm. network. You're also mm -hmm. running block, block 72. You know, where are mm -hmm. you focusing your efforts? So let's just let's just talk about those two, just so the viewers can understand the segmentation between Block 72 and STP. Yeah, I think it makes sense. I think I think I think uh, uh, on the company structures, I think Blossom two and STP just like uh, Block one and EOS. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar with them. So EOS mm -hmm. basically, Block one is maybe the technical vendor of the EOS. Okay. So it all company of EOS, right? So 
in, in this way, Bo72 is also a parent company of STP tokens. So okay. most like a, so basically Bo72 founders funding STPs as yes. a technical, as, as a like a decentralized version of this Bo72 business. Okay. So I think for for my I think for myself I think Bo72 and STP I think the ultimate ultimate goal for the two two company I think. Mm -hmm. So to is to bring fairness and the transparency to the like a token and asset issuance life cycle. Mm -hmm. so, so Blossom, I think Blossom 2, we have been focusing mainly for the past year and a half. We focus mainly on the, you know, those financial services, yep. uh, fundraising, fundraising. Mm -hmm. we have lots of to raise money in Asia and in West, right? But most in uh, in a centralized way, in, a, in a, and mostly focus on the institution level. So I think for STPs, so I think it will have three functions. One is we were, so we will bring those like a fundraising business mm -hmm. in on blockchain. So I think one thing is we will add a compliance layer on on, on current smart contract, right? Just like you know, I, I think that's also a protocol level thing. Just like most like a, right now, all the smart contract Ethereum EOS, they cannot uh, they, they cannot validate if this transaction or this issuance are mm -hmm. compliant with local jurisdiction like like authorities. But we will add those like a compliance layer. To make sure all the transaction, everything is happen, uh, happening in a legally way, and also have legal enforcement if anything defaults. Okay. So I think secondly is we want to engage our communities to participants our token insurance platforms. So STP in this case we are used as maybe a incentive tokens, or we have incentive plans around STP holders, and we will bring the best access of the top assets okay. with the best price for STP communities. So I think the 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 last point is, I think for STPs, uh, definitely, I think we want uh, for, for myself as a CEO of both companies, I will think STP and Boston 2 is one big family. So mm -hmm. STP will directly integrate with Boston 2 business and Boston okay. 2 business will be enhanced uh, by bringing STP community mm -hmm. into our daily operations. Okay. So I think, so it's, it's one unit. But I think it's one just one is centralized service and mm -hmm. one is decentralized service. You can think of finance exchange and a finance chain. Okay, got it. So I think this relationship, mm -hmm. well, I think both parties will benefit in this relationship. So let's so that's, that's really interesting. So, 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 so let's talk a bit about your roadmap then in terms of what what yeah. what do we have to look forward to as a community? What's what's your what's your next milestone that you need to hit in order to kind of yeah. show confidence? I think, to I us? think the, the next milestone is of course the first milestone for because I think the fundraising right now is close. Mm -hmm. So so we, we, we did a very community driven excuse me, we did a very community driven fundraising, I think, of like five million dollars. Okay. Uh, so I think past months. So uh, and there's right now I think we 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 will open other rounds which double the valuation that community got in and most like venture uh, like VCs and crypto funds, they show interest in that. So that's what I'm focusing on right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, after I think for, for, for May, I think the first milestone of course is listing and uh, we want to give liquidity to the people who invest in our product service. So I think that's a, that will be first milestone. So we mm -hmm. want to deliver, you know, maybe IEO is hype. So maybe we'll do IEOs on one of the major platform mm -hmm. and uh, and make sure the listing process is smooth. So, and then I think in terms of the like milestones in low user case, I think uh, we have two category milestones. One is in business, business level and one in the protocol level. Mm -hmm. So I think for business level, we will launch our STP wallets, uh, I think in July. And inside STP wallets, I think we will integrate lots of business functionalities of Bosom 2 into that. So I think, for example, um, you know, all the STP, I know, I, I, and all the Bosom 2, you know, because for example, one, one service that Bosom 2 provides to most like mm -hmm. uh, projects is marketing, right? So we help maybe, for example, Hashgraph go to Korea uh, to acquire current users. Maybe Hashgraph will pass a fee. And uh, and we will help them to build the current communities. I think that's very simple business relationships. Mm -hmm. So I think how this will happen after integrating with STP, I can just give you more like very specific user case. Mm -hmm. Before maybe Hashgraph need to pass maybe pay block seven to hundred k USD worth of money for the contract, okay. maybe for two months mm -hmm. to engage to engage like Korean communities, for example, right? But right now you don't need to pay block seven to money they just gave they just need gave us maybe maybe 100k or 200k hash graph tokens okay and, gave, and the blockchain too were gave to stp and we were directly uh 
just airdrop or do uh, or provide bounty program for STP holders in STP wallets. Mm -hmm. Even in some case, STP holders can use STP to participate and pledge for those like very, very cheap, like uh, those pri uh, cheap tokens from the best project like Hashgraph, right? I you see, okay. We, you can see we can do even do a small, like small amount of IEO, maybe 50K USD IEOs that uh, in STP wallets, right? STP can use as platform tokens to purchase. Mm -hmm. So I think, it's, I think we can do a lot of spin around this, like uh, token economies. Maybe then after, and all the STP token proceeds will be burned, so to make our supply deflated. So we can do lots of things around this. So blockchain we have lots of those kind of business use cases, uh, which we charge money or charge fiat money for for uh, from the from our clients. Okay. Right now we we will give we will give our communities that to and share those profits. So I think in this way, I think and. Uh, in this way, I think both parties will be benefits. So okay. uh, I think this, I think STP wallets will be a one big thing after this thing, and we will launch this in July. And then I think, then I think for the protocol level, I think our, we have a dev shop in Beijing, about like maybe five six people right now. Mm -hmm. So we working on. Uh, we already have a GitHub repo, but it's not it's private repo right now. So and uh, I think our mainnet can be launched around maybe November December ish this year. Okay. And uh, so after many launch, we will have you know we will have staking mechanism where we are, we are deploy a depot system to uh, to elect our compliance committee. Mm -hmm. So our compliance committee, you can think it's a super nodes. It's like a super node to EOS, right? Uh, I think com uh, compliance committee will be form of maybe six seven people at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, where 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 including you know lawyer uh, the best legal firms, some jurisdiction authorities. Mm -hmm. uh, representative and also company and also investors. So and uh, and uh, we are we, are, we are help them to stake. So and uh, and the purpose for staking is uh, because the regular well, the biggest responsibility for regular uh, for for compliance committee is mm -hmm. they need to validate if the offline you know the regulatory policy is updated with the database of the uh, the on chain mm -hmm. compliance validate. So, okay. uh, so if any dishonest dishonesty behavior happens, the staking tokens will be like a, a comp, uh, will be, uh, will be gone. I so, so yeah, will, will, will be paid to the STP holders. So I think that's, I think that's a major milestones for protocol level. I think mm -hmm. will be launched at uh, Q4 this year. Okay, interesting. So let's just, let's just go back to talking about the uh, fund fundraising elements. So you mentioned that you kind of raised already 5 million in, in the recent round of fundraising. So how, mu how much more have you got left, uh, left to raise before you, you know, start looking at getting everything ready? Uh, way? So I think, so I think regarding fundraising, I think uh, we plan to raise $6 million mm -hmm. at one cent, which gave us our network a total valuation of $20 million. Okay. So 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 I, so I think so 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 so, so I think uh, for the uh, for fundraising right now, since we close five million dollars, and after we close five million dollars at the one cents round, the commute and some big VCs come are interested. When, but for the five million dollar we close right now, mostly from from community money. Okay. So we have lots of holders or, already. So I think in the lo especially in local community in Asia, China, Korea, I think STP is very very hyped and have lots of like momentum. Mm -hmm. A lot of big funds they want to come in. So, but so for big funds like VCs, like Neo Global Capital, those big guys, they they want to invest big ticket size. Okay. So the reason I say uh, we raise seven dollars in a most in, in a most community way is we cap that we, we, we capped. We have square strict like maximum like mm -hmm. in ticket size maybe a hundred k. Okay. Per person. So I think for the family we raise is very spread out. So we are not allowed any big wheel or big fund to put big tickets in it. Okay. So some VCs right now are very interested in mm -hmm. that. So they, they want to buy big tickets, but uh, in I think uh, in return to the communities, they, they will pay the double of the valuations, which is they will pay two cents. Oh, wow. So, okay. so, so in a so, way, if it feels like you've kind of done it in a in a reversal, because normally you yeah, yeah. get, but, uh, normally get the biggest features not... coming in. But so how does the lock? So how does the locking mechanism work? I mean, I'm, that's going to be, and people are already thinking this when you said it already, right? So I'm assuming people are going to say, right? Well, well, how does the locking work then in terms of protecting the community investor, right? Because normally, yeah. when it's done the other way around, your your large whales or your VCs or your VCs are, are locked in for a certain amount of time or vested, 
before you go on an exchange and get liquidity and the prices fluctuate yeah. and because obviously there are some so, people in it that want to make money and want to get a bit of return on investment uh yeah. you, you've so, got both people right you've got people who follow your vision and want to see you grow and your token appreciate in value and and mm-hmm. share in your success and you've got other investors who are obviously in it from a uh, i hate to use the word but flipping right they, they're coming in they want to yes. you know no. make a profit and move on so how are you protecting some of the people in that case uh, I, I think I think we also did a very interesting design for this. I think one because I have been helping so many projects fundraising, right, mm-hmm. right. So I know all the mistakes most projects make in terms of fundraising. So I think I think it's firstly, so when we do fundraising, we separate equity race and the token race. So, so I think for for some big name like VCs like uh, FPG, mm-hmm. uh, Team Drapers Investments, like those are guys. We list those big names and big VC to invest our equity, of course, having two. So, and for equity, to- uh, for equity holders, they, got com- they can convert some tokens, uh, but their tokens is not liquid as, you know, the token investors. Yeah. So I think, for example, some lots of community are worried about, you know, FBG, things that are very powerful and they always got very the best price. So they may dump on the community, right? Mm-hmm. So for the token, but in our case, it's not. So those big VCs, they invest in our equity round, their token will be vested over three years. So they don't have liquid token at day one. So I think I think that's also a very good thing for the token investors. So and so so I, I think those those VCs will uh, stand with us for, mm-hmm. for for more than three years. They I think they are all long term believers of our project and myself. Okay. So and I think for token round, we did on like uh, right now we close on five million dollar raise, mm-hmm. and uh, it's all just like I said. Since some VCs who already invest in our equity round, right? So I think for our for our thesis of doing fundraising in token round is we want it as wide uh, the distribution as wide as it can be. Okay. So we limited the maximum each people can buy, and we want the we, so we want as more as as many people as can be. In our round, I think for our five million dollar round, we already have about five to six hundred different token holders. Okay. Some from communication, some mm-hmm. made from some you know, communities. I think the total and and the wallets add up, we have already had more than five to six hundred like, okay. like uh, investors. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think a normal IEO only had maybe one or two thousand, maybe one fifteen hundred is. So so I think so I think for our token round, it's more like a small like manual IEO. So <laughs> so. So I think that's how we design this. So okay. the tokens we want to we want community money. We want to uh, the dis- the distribution as wide as can be. And then for VCs who want to support us long term, they can invest our equities. So they they definitely they will have a line interest with our mm-hmm. founding team. But their token just not liquid at day okay. one. So they will not dump on our community. I think it's a, it's a very impressive approach. And clearly, like you've said, you've you've been in this space for a long time. You've supported. Um, other major projects as well as you've worked with sort of larger VCs as well in the past. So um, I, I, I like the approach and, and I'd be really interested to see how it all pans out in terms of, you know, once you actually do go um, public and end up listing as well at the same time. So Mike, um, I suppose, you know, thank you so much uh, for your time. It's been really impressive just listening to you from a business. It's very different from the other interviews that I've had because uh, from your perspective, uh, you're very business focused and, and and I really like that because it kind of shows that you're looking at it from a business standpoint. I mean, and obviously you understand the actual token side as well, um, clearly being in this space for a long time. So for our community who want to stay updated and in tune, you know, what's what's the next things they need to look out for with you? Uh, where, where, where do they need to go? Where do they need to go? Twitter, Reddit, GitHub? Yeah, I think so, with you guys? I, so right now, I think right now we have a social media bounty right now. So I think if you follow us on in Twitter and the Telegram and also the medians, you, I think we, we are doing a community bounty program right now. So I think and you, you are getting incentivized by earning STP tokens or like USDT, some crypto, other cryptocurrencies by doing that. So I think maybe check our media posts and also join our Telegram. And uh, I, I'm also very, I think I, I'm very, also very close to community. So if you guys ever have any questions to ask me, just ping me at Telegram. I will reply to everyone's message. Fantastic. So I'm not like, I'm not like a CEO at the hand behind the scene, right? I want to be the face. I want to very close to community. So, so if you have any questions, just ping me directly uh, on Telegram, 
So yeah, I will leave my Telegram handle to you so I can share. I will do. Well, thank you, Mike. Um, Look, I wish you all the success in your project. It absolutely sounds amazing. I like your approach. I like your focus. So all the best. And um, maybe we'll catch up in a few months time and see and see how you're doing. Yes, thank you. Great. Cheers, Mike. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.